Okay, my friends, we'll continue with um, putting together the covers for the album. And remember, this is the vintage Disney photo album. And it's going to be a large one. So you should have your two pieces of chipboard that measure 12 by 12. And this is how thick it is. So I don't know if you can see it there. It's, it's quite thick. And then one piece that will measure three and a half by 12 okay and then you're going to need a piece of Tyvek this is the one um, envelopes are made this way I buy them online um, Amazon or you can get them on eBay uh, they're about a dollar a piece but you can get you know out of one envelope because they're about 12 12 by uh, 12 by 16 or something like that so they're they're quite big you know so you, you just need uh, one sheet and this one is going to be or measure at uh, 12 by 7 okay once you have those two pieces you're going to be needing some score tape and this is the one I use this is the brand uh, Suka, Suka one I think it's called I, I'm not even sure this is the I believe the three or two and a half inches um, or it could be three I'm not sure but you need to cover this whole thing the Tyvek with it and the reason why I like this tape is because you can just rip it with your hands all right I hope this camera is re recording okay it's been so long I had to um, I had to do a um, update on my software and my computer because it, my videos didn't want to download all right all right this is the I believe the one and a half or the one let's see yeah this is the one and a half anyways you're going to be needing those score tapes you're going to need a quarter of an inch half an inch or if you can find the half an inch they have one that is five eighths I prefer that one myself uh, but half an inches will do you you'll need about three of the quarter inch and about two of the other ones and um, and if you can buy the large one or the wide one to cover this whole thing so that's how it is so now what I'm going to do I like to use my briar my briar to just keep give it a little making sure that that glue sticks to the Tyvek it's it's never never they have never come apart on me but you know still all right so I'm gonna take this backing There it is. There's a piece that didn't tear properly. And this one too. Alright, let me throw all this mess that I got in here. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is center my um, uh, spine piece. So I'm just going to center it, but it just, I'm going to eyeball it just like that you can tell it's not quite you know um, straight it doesn't really matter as long as you just eyeball it you want to have enough of this tie back on the sides in order to you know be glued to the front and back so now you're going to pick up one of your big pieces at 12 by 12 let me see if I can zoom out a little bit I don't know if it's going to do it oh, I can't do it from here then sorry about that all right so you're going to leave when you put this one in you're going to leave about an eighth of an inch in between them or even a quarter of an inch either one will work fine I'm going to leave I think about that much you see that and that's just about how much you're going to leave in the it's like a little gusset in between the both of them okay so let's do the other one let me move my Okay, so I'm going to do this. Alright, so there it is. Right there, and I'm going to burnish it too, just to make sure that that, you know, glue sticks to the, to the chipboard, okay? Okay, let me go get some papers and I'll be right back. Okay, my friends, I already decided the paper that I'm going to use to cover the front and back um, covers of the book and also the spine you're going to need I'm using uh, red myself and this is the coordination paper uh, <clears throat> excuse me so you're gonna need one sheet of that 
and you're going to cut six pieces at two by 12. And since it's a 12 by 12, you'll get six pieces and that's what you need. As soon as you have them, you, we're going to score them at one, all of them. Oops, my glasses are not, let's see, oh, there it is. One. I don't want to bore you with this, but that's just the way it goes. Oops. So all six of them need to be score. Okay. Let me remove this. And as soon as we have them all done, I am going to use the, let's see what size, the three quarters, no, th the five eighths of an inch um, score tape. And on the opposite side, you know, the, the paper has a um, right side and an off side. I'm going to use the off for the wrong side. And I'm going to put tape both sides. Make sure that you don't touch the score line. Oops, that's the wrong. I mean, I chose red to do the, the, the main color for my whole book. Um, so my pages, my main pages, everything is going to be done in this. Um, it's like a... Um, I don't even know what color it is. It's, I know it's red, but um, I don't know the name. And I know where I bought it, and I can go get some more. But you can use black, you can use yellow, you can use any color. You can use neutral, too, or, you know, it's up to you. But I, I'm, I'm choosing to do red with mine. I do have a lot of colors to use, obviously, because it's a Disney thing, so there's a lot. Stripes, um... Lots of stars, lots of um, polka dots, so many of them. But I think I want I want the color, the main color of the book to be red. All right. So now that they're here, what I'm going to do? Let me get my. You need to get your bone folder and let's see where did I put it? Here it is. Get your bone folder, and I first fold them with my hand, and then with bone folder, all of them. Not severely, you know, strong that you can rip the paper. You don't want to do that. This is good paper, anyways, but still. Just to make sure that it has shape. Because we are working with a 12 by 12 chipboard, I need to cover the edges first in order for me to have coverage because they don't make paper that is longer than 12 by 12 or bigger than that. All right, so. We've already put together our album, and it's so big it doesn't fit in camera, but you can see now we have, this is the spine right here, which measures three and a half here, and this one's right here, and then this one are 12 by 12, which is your front end cover back of your book. So the next things we're going to do, I'm going to open it this way. So I am going to put one of these in here it's like a little hinge that we're going to do but it's not a hinge see how it goes all the way to the corner there so that's what we're going to do but before i do that we're going to trim the edges or miter the corners whatever works for you so not taking anything from the length just do it catty corner and i always just remove one piece I always, always just stick one piece first, and then I go straight this way, and making sure that you cover the front, that's the most important part right here. So don't, you don't want it like that, you want it just so it just kisses the edge. And we're going to do this, perfect. Now we're going to do the second one. Again, we have to miter our corners. It just makes it for less bulkage, if you know what I mean. Okay, we'll remove just one. 
and you'll see why I do just one at a time. Okay, there it is. Keep rolling. All right, let's see. All right. So now we'll remove one backing. All right. And again, you want to make sure you cover this corner. That's the most important part because that's where you're going to be able to see the most. And you want that to be nice and crisp and clean. Okay, that's the other one. Now we'll switch to the other side. Same thing. It's miter corners. We are looking that this, the front cover of the book is completely covered. You don't want it to go over, but you definitely don't want it to be short. Oh, and I glued the wrong part. Oh, the other way, the other way. Okay, let me secure this again. There, right there. No, 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 no. Once it wants to go the wrong way, that you can't help it, but... All right, let me get this. Okay, there. I just want to make sure I get this corner properly. There. Okay. Turn it around. Miter corners. Same thing, we remove one side. So if you notice, we're gluing all the pieces on one side of the book, which is the outside in this case. So I'm going to put that there in this here. So that um, score line stays right over the edge of the book, of the chipboard. Another one. Oops. Okay. Same thing. Remove one side of the tape. And again, we're going to make sure that the corner is covered. Everything else can be fixed any other way, but in the corner needs to be completely done. Okay, so if, now you can see that we have all of the edges covered except for our spine. We're not going to worry totally about that right now. Let me clean up in here a little bit because then I won't be able to work. And this project being so large, it's just hard to keep it on on camera or on focus um, within range have you seen it so I'll try my best to do that all right bone folder you're gonna need it now and I use this part of the bone folder which is the widest part right there this one right here because I don't want to injure my paper I don't want to put so much stress that the paper starts to crackle so I'm gonna do this or you can do it this way too see if I can move it. I don't know if this is better probably and what we want in here is what I call a little highway I call this a little highway because you're able to see um, you know one edge to the other one you, you can also see the thickness of the chipboard and that allows you by the time we get close to put the paper down this this other side it's you have no bubbles in there it's completely completely burnished and it's not going to be any bubbles and it looks really really crisp and clean so you're going to do that to all edges where the paper is at and then we're going to and you can see I don't know if you can see Let's see, there it is right there hopefully you'll be able to see that that's what I called my little highway I want to see those two edges okay this is a big book to work with <laughs> okay let's see So just be conscious, you know, on the paper that you're using, make sure it's, um, it's a good quality paper. Otherwise, this type of work right here, that this type of burnishing may rip your paper. You don't want that. So, okay. I want to make sure I, got, I get this one too. And what I do, I just kind of semi pull it down this way and then I start burnishing up, but without too, too much force. Again, I am conscious of my paper and I don't want to cause any distress to it. Okay. 
Now this one, I think this is the last one of all the ones that I've done. Let me see. Yep, that's the last one. Okay, put your bone folder away. And now what we're going to do, I always put this ones first, top and bottom on both sides, here and here. And I like to do the front of the book or the edge of the outer part of the book last because that's the one that you really want to make sure looks good. Now we remove the backing tape. <clears throat> and remember, we already burnish it so there's not going to be any bubbles in there. It's almost like you already train your paper to come down and stick the proper way and you don't have to really, you know, fiddle with it at all. Okay. All right, so same thing. I, I still, you know, like to tug it a little bit down just to make sure I don't get any bubbles. But look how clean it looks. It looks really nice and clean. Let's keep on. Before you know, you're gonna have your book ready. There it is, nice. And let's turn it around. Remove the backing tape. All right. So there it is. Now what we need to do is close the side ones. And I am going to do it now. And again, I am pulling the paper as much as I can. Then there's your corner. See how nice they look? Nice and clean and crisp. I'll show you the other part. See? Very nice. Very clean. All right. Last one here. Oops. Okay. So again, I'm going to tug the paper or pull it down a little bit just to make sure that I don't get any bubbles in between. But I didn't. And there is right there, all of it. So then we have to do obviously our paper that is going to cover but before we do that we're going to cover our spine okay and this is what we have so I am going to cut a piece of paper that is let me get my other cutter my other trimmer <clears throat> sorry I didn't mean to make that much noise all right so that measures three and a half I'm going to do it at seven so seven by 12, it could be six and a half actually, but I'm gonna go for the seven. Okay, let me see how that looks. And then I'll let you know if we need different measurements. Nope, it's a, I like it the way it is, okay? It's perfect, all right. So now the remaining piece of paper right here See. Oh, never mind. We didn't need to do that. I'm sorry. But we do need... Oh, not this one. Not this one. Ah, that one is not working. We need two pieces. Or actually... Okay, friends. Let's continue with the other side. Sorry, I was interrupted by my kiddos. We had somebody at the door selling some, um, you know auto parts or whatever okay so we're gonna do the same thing over here we're going to center it between these two gussets and I say it's about there and now it's a matter of just pulling it out now we have to do the burn the burnishing with your uh, 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 this did not go all the way down there right there so you're gonna burnish the paper again Oops, making sure that we create a little highway and on the other side too. My camera is, is all zoomed out so it's kind of hard to you know get it on the whole project in in frame but we'll try I'll try my best. All right so we'll remove this backing now and we'll pull it as tight as we can down this way. Don't fold them yet. Don't don't fold your lead, your front and back yet. I'll show you what to do. Pull it as much as you can and glue it. Now, with 
not the sharp part of your bone folder I'm going to use kind of the widest right there I'm going to do a little bit of burnishing right here following this so let me see if I can show you this closer do you see that that's I did a little bit of burnishing there with the widest part of my of my um, bone folder and I'm gonna do it on all four so that's that when you do this it allows the the paper to be trained so by the time you fold it um, you know like you're gonna close the book you don't put strain on the paper and the paper knows where to go so just those two on each side and voila you have completed the front hand cover of your book isn't that nice alrighty then okay I'm now I'm going to my next thing is to choose my paper that is going to be my cover for my book and then we'll proceed from there I'm gonna go choose some papers and we'll start soon okay take care all right my friends I'm back let me just fix this camera a little bit sorry I don't mean to make you dizzy there oh well it's moving <sighs> let me see. give me a second here oh all right not right there um I've already decided what papers I'm going to use for front and back. Um, again, these ones are from, I believe, the Simple Stories, but let me, yeah, Simple Stories. And this is called Say Cheese. So I'm gonna use them from front and back. Now remember, this measures 12 by 12, front and back. So I am going to trim my paper a quarter of an inch shorter on both sides. So I'll measure this way. And I'm gonna cut it at 11 and three quarters. Got that. And then I'm gonna take it this way and again make it 11 and three quarters. Okay. And let me show you why I cut it that way. Because I want just a little edge to you know the red to pop out this way so there it is this is why oh my goodness it's such a big project it's hard to get it in frame I'm so sorry I will do my best all right so so there you have it oh and it's backwards Ta -da. sorry okay so that's what we're gonna do okay so what I'm going to do before I do that I am going to distress it with a little bit of let's see vintage photo and where is my distress inker? Right there. So, you don't have to watch this if you don't want to, the, the boring part, but just give it a little bit of a, you know, a vintage look, a distress or worn tattered look, because I really want to get this um, a little bit of. I want more of the vintage feel to it, especially once uh, we get to print all the ephemera that I have. Oh, it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. And my ink is giving out, I need to put some more. Okay. Yeah, there it is. It has a dirty look and I like that. So I am going to trim my other one same way. We're going to cut 11 and 3 quarters of an inch. And let me double check, check that I'm right there. Right there. Okay, that. And I'm going to cut it this way. 11 and 3 quarters. There. So I have those. And this one's it's ready for me to distress it also. Oh, I really need some ink. It's just running now. Sorry, I've been working on my garden. Look what I, I'm, I destroy my hands working outside. But anyways, leave me a comment or give me the thumbs up if you like this. Um, any questions as to, you know, Anything that portrays to the video, let me know. And I'll, I'll do my best to oops, try to get back with you guys. 
All right. There it is. I'll put that away. <clears throat> so now my next step oops, is to glue. So I don't know. It's hard to choose which one you I want in the front. Look at them. They're just gorgeous. But I'm going to go for the other one. First, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the edges. Right here. Uh-oh. My eBay. All right. So I'm going to give a couple to inside. You can also use the score tape. I just tried to use my this one first. All right. The other thing that you need to check at this time is some, you know, we always kind of mess one side more than the other. So make sure that the corners are all nice and neat on both sides. And the one that looks better, that's the one you're going to choose uh, for your um, for your front. So at this point, looking at them, I think, let's see, I like this. Let me see the other one. Yeah, I think I like this one for my front. So I'm going to go ahead and put it there. So, I'm going to start from the outer edge, and I am basically, what this is going to give me is a eighth of an inch all around the paper. I hope my big head is not in the way there, but, all right. So there it is. You can see it now. See how it lives? It just leaves a little bit on the side, and just, I don't know, it just, in, in my opinion, I think it's very cute that way. So just put it there. And I'm going to just give a little bit of a burnish, making sure that the tape adheres to the wall of the book. All right, where's my other piece? Okay, same thing. We're going to put tape. You can use whatever you want. You can use liquid too or anything you want. All right, so now this way. Oops, I hate when this does this. And it keeps on going on the, you know, instead of adhering to the paper, it just moves. All right, let me get another one here. There, and there. Okay. And it's backwards. Okay, this one is going to be this way, so I'm gonna try to get myself in frame here, which, very little will be in frame just because of, you know the size of the book all right i think we're there and voila we have your front cut and your back covered isn't that nice uh let's see i have oh there it is this i am going to put it in here with some words and obviously I put some more ephemera in here um, but for now that's what I'm going to do all right our next step is to get our um, oh my goodness my um, medium gel because I need to cover all this one all the paper because it protects the paper it protects the this um, cardstock here so it won't tear within time so that's why I'm going to do that so let me go get that get prepared and I'll be right back all right my friends I'm back and let me show you what I'm going to use is a gel it's a protective it's this one right here and it's called multi-medium matte you can use the glossy if you like that look I'm going to stick with a matte and brush you don't have to put it here on the spine. You're just going to do the covers on the outside, okay? I gotta get a bunch in there and just work my way through. And you can just lift it if you want to. You really wanna make sure you get those edges. And then we'll let it dry. And we're not going to put our papers on the inside covers yet because I'm not sure what sort of um, um, style um, or frames I'm going to use inside the book. So therefore, at this time, we're just working on the outside until until I decide. Because I don't I don't have a clear um, you know mental picture of what I'm going to do. I'm trying to keep in frame. Let me see if this helps a little bit. Oh, that's a little better. 
All right. This takes a lot of gel because it's a big book. But I have a feeling it's going to be awesome. It's funny how the things that we always think that we don't like and we'll never do, that's when you end up doing them. <laughs> oh my goodness, do I know that lesson so well. Really, it never called my attention, you know, and I, we love Disneyland. We love it. We go there all the time. And um, at least every, you know, couple of years we go. And so I have tons of photos. They're, they're in a regular album, nothing scrapbooking, you know, anything like that. And, um, but <clears throat> I just never, caught, you know, caught my attention to do it that way, to do an album. But then when I thought about it and then I started looking for papers, they had this one that looked very vintage. Now that was my style. So I went ahead and said, okay, let's do one. And it says, why not make one that everybody can follow? And so this is your free tutorial. All right. So I'm going to go wash my brush and we'll be right back. All right, my friends. So we've already finished with um, putting the matte medium on our front and, cover, front and back cover of the book. Let me get the book. Mine is already dry, <clears throat> but something that I forgot to tell you uh, when I was putting the medium over the paper is that you will see a lot of, um, and I'm not sure if you can capture that in this camera, like bubbling up almost. See, okay, if I put it this way, you can kind of see it a little bit there and the other side too. So there's a little bit of a bubbling effect. Don't worry. That will, the, you know, I can feel them here. It will go down eventually. It's This is just a chemical or a natural reaction to, to humidity with paper and the chipboard. So don't worry. It may look hideous right now, but it will get completely flat. Um, I do this to all my albums and I have a lot of experience with this. So don't worry. It'll be completely flat once there's absolutely no humidity um, in them. So don't freak out and think, oh, no, what did I do? You know, no, it's all good. All right. So this is where we are at. So now what we're going to work on next is um, we're going to work on our um, hidden hinge for our book. And I'm going to tell you what I did here. I used a Martha Stewart um, scoreboard just because it's every every eighth of an inch and I just like it because I don't have to be moving my paper at all. So you're going to have a paper that measures 12 by 11 and a half. So make it a 12 and 11 and a half. Now you put your paper onto towards your scoreboard on the 12 inch side, okay? And you're going to start on Let's see, one and three eighths. So that's a, your first mark right there. And then the next one would be one and seven eighths. In other words, you're doing two half an inches in one three, uh, three eighths of an inch. That's basically what we're doing. So uh, you're going to follow all the sequence and you're going to have the same amount. You can see the scoring part right here. So you have two. They are the same size, half an inch, and one that's a little smaller, which is three eighths of an inch. So that's you're gonna follow that sequence um, all over. And my my battery is going down, so let me get that taken care of that, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 